Let's say that it's a hot day at the beach and you're pretty thirsty, you want some lemonade to drink. So you look at Google Maps, and it says that there's six lemonade stands just in the region about you. Now, you really don't care which brand of lemonade you drink. As long as it's lemonade, then you're good. So you're gonna go to the closest lemonade stand around. So say you're over here, then you go to this lemonade stand, and if you're over here, you go to this lemonade stand. And this, let's assume that this is true for every person in this scenario. So everyone just goes to the closest lemonade stand around them. Now the question for today is, what area of customers does each lemonade stand get? Or to put it a little more precisely, for each lemonade stand L, what is the region consisting of all points closer to L than any other lemonade stand? You know, it's an interesting question, and the answer is not immediately obvious when you look at it. You know, is it a circle surrounding L? Or maybe it's some circle with some additional regions? You know, what kind of shape is it? In this video, we'll see an answer to this question through something called a Voronoi diagram, and we'll see its connection to both measuring rainfall averages and, even surprisingly, to how to social distance yourself at your local Walmart. So let's get started. First, let's consider the case where there's only two lemonade stands, A and B. So, what would be the points closer to A, and what would be the points closer to B? Well, what we can do is draw the perpendicular bisector of A and B, and then all the points on the side of A will be closer to A, and all the points on the side of B will be closer to B. For example, this point P right here is going to be closer to A than it is to B. And if you want a more rigorous proof of this, you can use the Pythagorean Theorem. But we won't go into too much detail right now. For now, it should be sort of intuitively obvious that points on the red side of the line are closer to A, and points on the blue side of the line will be closer to B. So for two points, all we do is draw the perpendicular bisector, and that divides the plane into the two half planes one closer to A and one closer to B. So, on to three points. So we're going to break this problem down and just look at A and B for now. So from the two-point example, we know that all the points on the right half of this line are going to be closer to A than B. And looking at A and C, we see that all the points on the blue half of this line are going to be closer to A than C. So now the key is to look at both of these lines at the same time. So everything on the blue half of this line is closer to A than C, and everything on the red half of this line is closer to A than B. Well, then that means the points closest to A are in this purple region, which is the intersection of the blue half plane and the red half plane we can see that the points closest to A are the points closer to A than B intersected with the points closer to A than C, which is going to be the purple region. Using the same argument, we can show that the points closest to C are the points closer to C than A and closer to C than B, which is going to be this red region. And that leaves the points closest to B to be this leftover region, which we're going to shade blue. And there we have it. Here's a diagram for three points, showing all the regions which are closer to one point than any other point. The name for these diagrams is a Voronoi diagram, named after the Russian mathematician Georgi Voronoi, who studied these diagrams and investigated them in higher dimensions as well. Now, one final note about the Voronoi diagram for three points before we move on is that we have three perpendicular bisectors. And given the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle, they actually will intersect at the circumcenter of the triangle. So, in fact, we can see that the middle point P is the same distance R away from all three points A, B, and C. And this is a useful check to know that you know, this diagram is correct, since the intersection point of the three lines should be equidistant from all three of our points. So now with this knowledge behind us, we can now go look at our original setup with the six lemonade stands. 
And in particular, we're going to ask, what is the set of points closer to A than any other lemonade stand? Well, remember what we did with three points? Where we took the points closer to A than B, and we intersected it with the points closer to A than C? Well, it turns out that we can do the same with any number of points. So, what we're going to do is first take and this point up here. And the red region is going to be the points closer to A. Taking A and this point down here, we have another red region, which is again closer to A than this lemonade stand on the bottom right corner. And we can do the same for all the lemonade stands, each one by one. And now that we have these five half planes, we just need to take their intersection. And this will give us a region of all points closer to A than any other lemonade stand. That's pretty cool. We can do this for every lemonade stand to get a complete Voronoi diagram for six lemonade stands. So there you have it, solutions to our lemonade problems. And we can see that this is applicable to a wide variety of scenarios, not just lemonade stands. For example, say that you're flying a plane and midair it suddenly there's something wrong with it, you know, and you have to land at the nearest airport. Well, where do you land? If you had a Voronoi diagram of the area, you could see which airport's the closest, and which one you should go to. Another example might be if you really need to go to the bathroom, and you want to find the closest bathroom and run straight towards it. Well, a Voronoi diagram of the bathrooms in your neighborhood or your school might help you find the closest bathroom. And just generally, any scenario where you want to go to the closest landmark, within a certain region. A Voronoi diagram helps. Here's another example which might not be so obvious. So let's say that you're trying to measure rainfall and you want the average rainfall of, an whole, of a whole area, but you only have rain gauges at certain points. Like your rain gauges only measure the rain at this specific location and not like a whole area around them. So you have a rain gauge in the middle that measures 2.1 inches of rain you have a rain gauge to the upper right that measures 2.5 inches of rain, and so on. So given these rain, rainfall volumes at specific locations, how do you find the average rainfall for the whole region? Well, Voronoi diagrams to the rescue. Obviously, you don't, know the, you don't know the true average value given only these measurements, but a Voronoi diagram can give you actually a pretty good estimate. So what we want to do is draw a Voronoi diagram with the rain gauges as your points. And then, for example, for this entire red region, we're going to assume that every point in the region has gotten 2.1 inches of rain. And similarly, for the upper right region, we're going to assume that whole region is 2.5 inches, and so on. Then this way, uh, if we assume this much rain for every point in the region, then we can actually get an average for the entire region. And then, this is actually one of the best estimates you can get using just these points as your data points. And it's the estimate that a lot of actual meteor, a lot of actual people who want to measure rainfall, what they use. Before we leave, here's one final application of Voronoi diagrams to the world outside. So let's say that you're going to your local Walmart to buy, you know, Walmart things. And once you're there, you're like, oh crap, there's a lot of people. How am I supposed to practice social distancing? Oh gosh. But you know, you, you gotta get your stuff. You gotta get your like hot Cheetos and toilet paper. So you look at the Walmart and you see that there's people in well spread out throughout the store. And you wanna get as far away from people as possible so you do not get the coronavirus. So where should you stand? Which points in the store are the farthest away from anyone else? And let's say that you can't just wall hug because the stuff you want isn't on the walls and that's kind of cheating. So it has to be like somewhere within the middle of the store. Where should you stand to be the farthest away from people? Well, just like in our first example, let's just look at two people and see what we get from there. So let's say you're standing where the green arrow is, between these two folks right here. Notice that you're closer to the person on your left than you are to the person on your right. So you could get farther away from everyone by moving more towards the right. And this will continue to hold true until you're exactly at the midpoint between the two people. 
At this point, you're equally far from them, and moving either left or right will bring you closer to a person than you were before. So the optimal location to stand between two people is in the middle of them. You don't want to be closer to anyone than anyone else. For three people, it's still true that if you want to be the farthest away from everyone, you don't want to be closer to any specific person than any other person. So, for example, let's say you're trying to distance yourself from A, B, and C. Well, if you are, let's say, close to point B, you can get farther away from everyone by moving along this line to the center of the circle, whereupon you would be a distance R from A, B, and C, and equally far from all three of them. Even if you position yourself exactly between A and C, you could still get farther from both A and C by moving along this line towards the center. And once you reach the center, that will be the farthest you can get from A, B, and C while being within triangle A, B, C. And maybe another way to think about this is that A, B, and C lie on a circle, and the farthest you can get away from the edge of the circle is the center of the circle, which is this is R away from every point on the edge of the circle. Okay, so our rule is to not be closer to any person than any other person. Well, being close to something is what Voronoi diagrams do, so why don't we draw a Voronoi diagram for our people? And we'll see that we don't want to be in any colored region, because if we're in a colored region, then we're closest to the point corresponding to that region. We're closer to that point than any other point. So really where we want to be is these points of intersection, where you're equally far from everyone else, and you can social distance yourself with peace. So, Next time you go into Walmart, what you want to do is take a map of all the people, draw their Voronoi diagram, then you will know exactly where to stand. As long as they don't move, of course. In conclusion, what we found is that asking where the closest lemonade stand is led us to drawing these diagrams called Voronoi diagrams, which have applications in a surprising amount of other things, from measuring rainfall to social distancing. So now, armed with this new knowledge, you can go out there and avoid the coronavirus with Voronoi diagrams. <laughs>